In today's video, I'm gonna be going over the ultimate Star Wars Battlefront 2 Iceberg. This was created by me to share everything I've learned about the 2017 Battlefront game over the last seven years that I've played. This iceberg covers a lot of topics from game breaking glitches to hidden secrets during development. There's probably gonna be at least one thing you don't know on this chart. If you don't know what a YouTube iceberg is, it's a collection of information that ranges from widely known to super hidden. So the lower you go on the iceberg, the more unknown secrets. And as always, if you do enjoy this video, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and like to help boost the iceberg to the recommended page. It really helps me out and I would love if you do it. Thanks so much. Lastly, if you do play Battlefront 2 on Xbox and want to join a really big group, check out the GRM. Our Discord will be in the description. And without further ado, let's jump into the iceberg. Battlefront 2 mods. Battlefront 2 actually has a very vast modding community for the PC version of the game. Some of these include new characters, maps, texture changes, and just other improvements to the base vanilla Battlefront 2. I definitely encourage anyone who plays on PC to go check out these mods because it's some really cool stuff that you'll find. Planet Fauna. Every map in the installment of Battlefront 2 has several different animals and small creatures roaming around the map. You can find some stuff like Ewoks on Endor, you can find the Iowas flying on Kamino's platforms, the Runyip on Yavin 4, which is the weird little zebra things, and a massive Ronto wandering around most Eisley. There's so many small little animals on the map, you can really find anything if you're looking for it. Battlefront 2 Milsoms. Milsoms are short for military simulators, which are gaming groups created for larger scale cooperative play. These milsoms get together to play for fun or competitive reasons. Similar to clans, these military simulators offer friendship and a community for a game everyone's just really passionate about. And Battlefront 2 is no exception. I'm a little bit biased, but if you are interested in these large groups, definitely check out the Galactic Public Milsom. We're a Clone Wars based Battlefront 2 community, we're Xbox, and we're growing every single day. We'd love to have you. Interactable Environments. This entry on the iceberg actually refers to all the background effects on the different planets and the different maps in the game. Stuff like the wind physics, the leaves, the birds that fly away, footsteps in the snow, the way the grass moves when you interact with it, and other stuff like NPCs running away on Galactic Assault, in Naboo and Tatooine, control panels you can destroy on planets like Hoth, and even just like doors you can control on Death Star. There's so many small things you can notice, you can pretty much check anywhere on the map and you'll always find something. Battlefront 2 campaign. Everybody knows about the six hour long campaign for Battlefront 2. It's Aiden Versio on her journey throughout the Empire and her defection to the Rebellion and Resistance. What you probably don't know is that the character of Aiden Versio was actually expanded upon in a book titled Star Wars Battlefront 2 Inferno Squad. It was written by Christy Golden and the story follows Aiden and her experience with the Empire, her father, and the Battle of Yavin. A little fun fact, Aiden Versio was actually there to witness both destructions of the Death Star. We saw the one in the game, but in the book, Aiden's fighting in a TIE fighter when the first Death Star blows up. Because of this, she's actually forced to hide out on Yavin from Rebellion forces until the Empire eventually invades the planet. It is a really good book, I definitely recommend checking it out if you have the chance. Pride and Accomplishment This entry is talking about a comment that was made by the EA community team on a Reddit post talking about the absurd paywalls back in the day when it was first coming out. The community was justifiably very unhappy with a 60,000 credit paywall for Vader, and so EA thought it was a good idea to reply to the feedback, saying the intent is to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes, which is now the most downvoted post in Reddit history. Loot box controversy. The reputation of Battlefront 2 is a continued challenge even seven years after the game's release. And it all started with the loot box controversy. When the open beta for the game released, people discovered the loot box system and the game's terrible reliance on gambling crates for good star cards. This means the best way to get better at the game was locked behind these crates that can be paid for with real money. Basically, pay to win. Long story short, there was basically another uproar in the community, and people were just getting really really pissed about the pay to win. It basically got really popular on YouTube to kind of shit on Battlefront 2, and some places like Hawaii even did an investigation against the game for child gambling. Because of this, Battlefront 2 sparked a lot of heated debate over the terrible practice of video game gambling systems, and it kind of forced gaming companies to change how they exploited their player base. And now loot box systems are kind of a rare sight in video gaming history. I think it's mainly because companies are kind of afraid to actually do anything anymore, so they'd rather resort to stuff that's safer, like battle passes where you actually pay and you earn the rewards as you play. 
However, battle passes have their own problems with FOMO and exploiting the player base. Infinite Supremacy This entry refers to the endless nature of the game mode Supremacy. In Supremacy, when you win the ground phase, you get a chance to attack and take down the enemy capital ship. However, if the team doesn't destroy the ship, both teams return to the ground phase and fight the first phase again. Because of this back and forth, it's technically possible to have an endless game of supremacy. And this infinite system also means people can rack up insanely high kill streaks. Cantina Ban. This is pretty widely known, but if you go on Tatooine, you can actually find a Cantina Ban hologram inside of the Mos Eisley Cantina. Figure and Dan and the modal nodes can be found playing their iconic Cantina theme when activating the hologram. There's also a mysterious shadow hidden behind the Cantina ban. It resembles some kind of stormtrooper, but it's most likely a visual bug in the Cantina. Unless it isn't. Battlefront 2 Petition A petition on Change.org quickly rose to fame and popularity in April 2020. This petition was in favor of continuing support for the Battlefront franchise, which was just announced that it was stopping support for the game. The petition gained 50,000 signatures in two weeks and currently sits at 124,000 signatures. Weekly Events This entry is actually about the limited time events that happen each week, some of which include Monday's Fast Respawn, Wednesday's Triple XP, Friday's Cheap Reinforcements, and Saturday and Sunday's Double XP. It really is just some small stuff to go to keep you going throughout the week. Clone Commando Regen this is pretty widely known, but the middle ability for the Clone Commando actually gives Siphon on damage. And Siphon means that any damage dealt to your enemies will actually heal you. This ability is really really good for advantages like 1v1 fights and choke points, and just keeping you alive in general. Battlefield 2042 over Battlefront 2 This center in the iceberg just refers to the fact that EA kind of abandoned Battlefront 2 in favor of the new Battlefield 2042 game. They forced the DICE developers to be moved to help with the release of the new game, which basically forced DICE to shut down support for Battlefront 2. Battlefield 2042 ended up actually having a more rough release, similar to Battlefront 2, and continues to be the inferior game between the two, in my opinion. Hook Swing. The Hook Swing was popularized in Battlefront 2 towards the end of the game's updates. By turning your look sensitivity high enough, you can do a jump swing and turn a 180 to strike a character in the back, where they can't block. This technique is primarily used by offensive duelers who try to deal as much damage as possible in the shortest amount of time. Jump Swing also has a shorter attack animation, making it a preferred way to go on the offense. This is especially useful for General Grievous who has some really strange jump physics, allowing the jump attack to be spammed in mass to deal a massive amount of damage to enemies who just aren't aware of how dangerous Grievous could be. Like seriously, if you are being attacked by Grievous and he's jumping around like a crazy person, like don't get close to him because he will shred your health. Bosk Regen Bosk is actually the only hero in Battlefront 2 that can regenerate their health back to full, no matter how much damage he does take. As long as you give it enough time, he can heal all the way back to full and then you're just back in the fight again. This makes him really really powerful for long siege style gameplay, like heroes versus villains or tight quarters, ship phases of supremacy, he's just really really powerful in those small areas. Parrying Parrying is actually a technique used in real life sword fighting. The idea is a timed block to an attack that you can use to take advantage of the other opponent and attack yourself. Pairing has been very prevalent in all sorts of video games from Jedi Survivor to Spider-Man, but it's really important for dueling in Battlefront 2. In Battlefront, if you hold your block while in lightsaber dueling, you can wait for the exact moment someone strikes to attack. This means you can block their attack and instantly deal an attack while they're still stuck in their animation. Pairing prevents the opponent from blocking a response attack, and it's just a really really good way of dueling. Kyber Servers Kyber is an unofficial PC add-on to Battlefront 2 that allows people to mod their games to create custom lobbies of their own. With this add-on, you can customize the lobby with different Battlefront 2 mods such as custom heroes, maps, and anything else you really want in the game. I believe as of recording this video there is a Kyber 2.0 on the way, but as of right now, Ahsoka Tano can live on through Kyber. First Order Food 
On the First Order capital ships, you can find a mess hall with rows of tables for the ship staff and the stormtroopers. In between the tables, you can find columns that you can interact with to get a tray of food. It's hard to tell what's actually on the plates because it's kind of low poly, but there better be some cold blue milk to go with it. Felucia Sarlacc On the supremacy map of Felucia, you can find several key landmarks, one being a drowned Sarlacc pit at command post D. This pit will instantly kill you if you jump into it, and the Sarlacc has no animations or kill effects, so you kind of just like pop and die. You will simply instantly die and your body will just fall beneath the map. Speeders, however, are the only thing that can actually stand on the water without falling in. The 181st and 87th. The 181st Armor Division and 87th Sentinel Corps are exclusive skins made specifically for the Clone Wars maps of Battlefront 2. Before there were customizable clone skins in game, the default clones were either Phase 1, 181st, or 87th. When clone skin variants came out, they turned those Battlefront 2 exclusive skins into actual Legion numbers. The 181st and 87th are recognized as a part of the official Star Wars canon and have descriptions of their groups when you look at the skin. Heroes Unleashed Every year on January 1st and May 4th, a custom event for Battlefront 2 becomes available. In Galactic Assault and Supremacy, all heroes become available to play all at the same time. This means you can have 22 heroes and villains on a Galactic Assault map at the same time. There's also a reduced battle point event, so it's easy to get the heroes. It is absolute chaos, and I definitely recommend playing during those two days. Unfortunately, there is a history of the event not occurring due to Battlefront 2 server bugs, so it is a hit or miss every year. Distant Battles In several maps across all three eras, you can find some battles going on in the distance. From a close-up perspective, it really is just low-poly models shooting bullets in a random manner, but it really is just a fun detail to spot, and it's, it's kind of cool to look at. Old Capital Supremacy Supremacy nowadays is a little bit different to how it was when it first came out. Currently, the last section of the ship phase of Supremacy only has one of the two sides utilized at a time, depending on which objective area you actually captured. But back then, when Supremacy was called Capital Supremacy, both sides were supposed to be attacked and it was a button to hack, similar to Kamino. The change was made to the game mode because it was incredibly difficult to beat the ship phase and hack both the sides, making games endless, averaging 3 hours minimum. Battlefront 2 Open Beta The Open Beta was the catalyst to all the loot box pay to win controversy. Outside of all the problems of the Open Beta, the game was actually only allowing 3 games to choose from. Starfighter Assault on Fondor, Strike on Takodana, and Galactic Assault on Naboo. At the time, all the other game modes and maps were locked from play, making everyone speculate how the game would be played. Hero play was also limited to only 4 characters in Galactic Assault, Rey and Han on the light side, and Maul and Boba Fett on the dark side. Java's Palace Battlefront 1 This entry refers to the Java's Palace map that was available in Extraction, HVV, and Hero Showdown. The map was originally made for the 2015 installment of Battlefront, and was later remade for Battlefront 2. The map in the game mode of Extraction is the last remnant of the Battlefront 1 game. The only other map replica ported from Battlefront 1 is the Vestman Palace. Battlefront 3 Cancelled Star Wars Battlefront 3 was a planned EA DICE game that was starting development when the EA pulled support on the Battlefront franchise to focus efforts on Battlefield 2042. Because of the bad reputation of Battlefront 2's release, EA was too scared to commit to the franchise with another installment. Looking back, it's clearly a bad decision as everyone actually wants a Battlefront 3. There were actually a large number of EA DICE employees that left the company when Battlefront support was cut short because they were doing the job for the opportunity to make a Star Wars Battlefront game, not a Battlefield game. One of these included the game director, Dennis Branval, who was deeply saddened about the potential of Battlefront 2 and the next installments of the franchise. He actually confirmed in a YouTube livestream comment that he quit the company because the pitch for Battlefront 3 was turned down. Unfortunately, it seems like we might never actually get a Battlefront 3. Matt Schell on Reddit, a former live producer for Star Wars Battlefront 2, stated, Dennis was great to work with, a pillar of the team, and most of them ended up leaving after we could not work on Star Wars. Transitioning to Battlefield was not easy for several reasons. Crates and Crafting Parts Crates and Crafting Parts were the main way to progress in Battlefront 2 before they implemented the progression update. You would use credits earned from matches to purchase loot crates that have star cards and cosmetics of different rarities. If you got a duplicate from the crate, it would give you crafting parts. With enough of these crafting parts, you can upgrade the tier of the star card if you're choosing.
Broken Star Cards Some star cards for heroes and villains are either broken or entirely useless. Some cards to avoid using due to doing nothing is Luke's Deflection Mastery, Leia's Fearless, Lando's Quick Shock, Bosk Spreading the Disease, and Maul's Fool Me Once. If you do want to check out more about the Broken Star cards, definitely check out Pico's video on the topic, and the link will be in the description to check it out. I definitely recommend it, it goes way more in depth about the star cards. Out of Bounds There's some several small glitches to break out of the bounds of the map. Such examples are common on the capital ships on Supremacy, but you can basically glitch through boxes and land on the floor of the planet's surface and just hang out. Not much can be found outside on the floor, but it is fun to explore the section of the map that you're not supposed to be. Another secret is actually that there's a little hole in the wall on Starkiller's base that you can see Snoke's throne room from the movie. Parry Locking Parry Locking is a rare chance to continuously parry back and forth, which drains both the opponent's stamina very rapidly. It does look really, really cool, but it's really hard to replicate unless the opponent is spam pairing at the same time you are. Fin Glitch This exploit takes advantage of a bug with his big deal ability, allowing him to grant teammates stamina reduction and bonus health among other perks. Normally, the ability doesn't last forever, but with a specific glitch, it's infinite for the teammates until Finn is killed. This glitch is widely used by people who like to hide behind their teammates in HEV. Those goddamn cowards. Poe's Battle Points This entry is pretty simple, it's just talking about Poe Dameron's X-Wing and Starfighter Assault. Normally, hero starships aren't able to learn a lot of battle points per kill, and it's just basically to prevent overpowered players from being able to play a hero over and over again. However, a bug in the code caused Poe's X-Wing to earn just as many battle points as a regular Starfighter. Poe Dameron is currently the most overpowered Starfighter in the entire game too, which just adds on to that. Reinforcement Glitch There's a certain way to bypass the reinforcement cap during a match. By choosing the same character at the same time, you pretty much convince the game that it's only one person playing instead of two. This pretty much means that you can do this with anything, reinforcements, tanks, heroes, anything that you can play on the game, you can duplicate and have a reinforcement glitch. It's a pretty common thing to happen, but most cases of this are by accident, and it's pretty rarely talked about in the Battlefront community because it's not really that well replicated. However, there are tryhards in the Battlefront community, and they do replicate this thing to make multiple heroes at the same time, which can be really annoying to play against. Naked hero. <clears throat> that was weird. Uh, anyways, there's some really weird unknown bugs that cause characters and heroes and villains to sometimes lose parts of their character model. It often results in invisible limbs, missing clothing, and just some other kind of weird visual glitches throughout the game. It's, it's not that common though. Skywalking A glitch with speeder bikes allows players to bypass the skybox limit and get on top of the skybox. This breaching glitch has particular roots on both Naboo and Kashyyyk and allows the player to levitate above the map, hence why it's called skywalking. For the sake of the Battlefront community, I will not be sharing how to do this glitch. With this exploit, players can spawn their teammates above the skybox and use reinforcements such as aerials and arc troopers. Luckily, there has been no recorded evidence of heroes or tanks being able to skywalk as of right now. Pipe glitching. A certain pipe above an objective on the Republic Vendor can be taken advantage of to hold the objective in a permanent contestion. With the pipe placed above the objective, players using the aerial can fly into the inside of the pipe and be safe from any blaster fire while infinitely contesting the objective. Ray's Face This entry refers to the old facial model for Ray before the Rise of Skywalker update. Some small tweaks they did just to update it to make it look more like Daisy Ridley, and you could tell in the trailer they really wanted to show it off. Droidica Crash Speeder Before the Droidica was released in Battlefront 2, there was major speculation over a teaser image that showed what looked like a destroyer droid in the background. This clearly obvious droidica was later passed off as a crash speeder or environmental clutter by the EA producers. The droidicas were announced shortly after the event and the developer mishap is just a fun lesson for why you should always check every part of a teaser image. Cut content. 
In 2021, the game director for Star Wars Battlefront 2 revealed that Ahsoka Tano, Asajj Ventress, and the planet Mustafar were all in early prototypes when Battlefront 2's development was cut short. They were planning to release the DLC after the Scarif update, which ended up not coming to fruition. Data miners also found references in the game files to both characters, along with Padme Amidala as well. Coruscant was also in the works to be added in future DLC, as well as the return of the limited time game mode, Jetpack Cargo. Takodana Easter Egg There's actually a small Easter Egg hunt that you can follow in the map to find a secret room inside of the castle. It's a little bit complicated, so I'm not going to explain it, but definitely check out videos to see how it's done. Once you're actually inside of the room, you unlock the Ray skin, and you can also find a group photo of the Battlefront 2 development team. This room is actually a reference to the Force Awakens movie when Ray finds Anakin's lightsaber in the same room. It's currently the only way to unlock the resilient skin for Ray in Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2 Zimming Zimming is a new to gaming, and it's the act of tricking your console into thinking your keyboard is actually a controller. Consoles automatically block keyboard input as it would provide an unfair advantage, but by using a zimming device players can gain the advantage of controller aim assist with the precision of a keyboard on consoles. Zimming is considered cheating in a wide range of video games and could result in your account being banned. I do not recommend doing it, it's really scummy, just don't do it. BX Commando Droid Movement Tech Using the Commando Droid, you can move quickly around the map by using an alternating dash and vibro sword ability combo. This takes advantage of the ability's dash forward, combined with the Commando Droid's large dash. Using this technique, Commando Droids can clear a map way faster than other reinforcements. Old Heroes vs Villains HVV used to have a different way of playing. The modern version of the game mode is a simple team deathmatch, but when the game first came out, it was a target based game mode. During the match, one player on each side would be selected as the target, and would be hunted by the enemy team. If a target was killed, a point would be rewarded to the other team, and new targets on both sides would be chosen. Basically, it was a race to eliminate the other team's target before they eliminate yours. It was a fun initial system, but was later changed because of players' tendencies to run away from all their fights when they were chosen as targets, especially people like Boba Fett. Only Reload This entry refers to the fact that the only character that actually has to reload a clip in their blaster is the Clone Commando. Everyone else's blaster just overheats during combat, which is lore accurate. Battlefront 2 website The Battlefront 2 website is a fun way to explore all the content of the game. It's limited in details, but it does show some small info about characters, planets, and gameplay. The website stopped updating after the final DLC, but the site remains open for people to browse if they'd like. Developers leave Battlefront 2 With the disaster that was the Battlefront 2 release, 40 members of the development team left DICE and stopped supporting the game's updates. These 40 members were actually 10% of the entire DICE team, and this was a major hit for anything related to DICE, including Battlefront 2. One of the developers was quoted saying, It was a debacle. For many, it was very tough to have to quickly redo the game. This is basically referring to the loot box controversy and the quickly rushed new progression system for Battlefront 2, which led to major developing employee crunch. Lightsaber Blade Shape Several lightsabers throughout the Star Wars canon have differently shaped points to their blade. In the Clone Wars and sequels, lightsaber blades were more pointy, and in the original trilogy they were more round. This translated to Battlefront 2 with certain characters having either round or pointed lightsabers. HVV Cloning Through some clever abuse of the respawn system, players can play as characters at the same time as other players, allowing multiple versions of the same hero. The only downside to the glitch is that it wastes lives in the game mode, and once the player dies, they are unable to play as the character again unless someone does the glitch again. Last Jedi Season At the start of Battlefront 2, the developers tried to have future DLC as seasons. The first test of these seasons was the Last Jedi DLC, that came a month after Battlefront 2's release. In December of 2017, Last Jedi was releasing in theaters. The Battlefront team wanted to release the crate map alongside the movie, and players could choose a side and hero to root for either the First Order in Captain Phasma or the Resistance in Finn. If you chose a side, you would complete weekly faction challenges in order to earn loot crates with special rewards. This season also released the Dakar Starfighter Assault map and DLC for the Battlefront 2 campaign. Ewok Hunt Pie A peculiar easter egg can be found on the maps of Ewok Hunt. On the Research Station 9 map, aka the Galactic Assault Endor map, you could find pies scattered around the forest. If you find and destroy all the pies around the map in the same round, a musical cue will let you know about a secret vault that opened. 
Once the door to the vault is open, you can access a button in the room. And I'll leave the rest a secret for those who want to find the Easter egg. Leia hair and ass nerf. Leia's model was actually changed during the duration of Valfrin's support. Her hair was changed with no particular reason, and you could see the original hair model in the Valfrin 2 campaign. In the same model change, they actually also nerfed Leia's ass, and we don't really know why. Battlefront 2 Story Thread There have been a few conspiracies about a potential story thread that links the multiplayer maps on Battlefront 2. As far as we know, there's no direct link between missions in the same era. Although nothing has been confirmed, there are signs of a faint story thread that we can follow throughout the different game modes of Battlefront 2. And so this is my personal theory for the prequel timeline. And it all starts with Camino Galactic Assault. CIS forces push back the clones in their facilities, and Republic Venators are unable to reinforce, making them have to abandon the ground forces to support an incoming aerial attack nearby. The Venators would actually end up being the two flagships we see throughout the Starfighter Assault match on Kamino. These same Venators are the link between all the maps throughout the prequel era. These capital ships will be sent throughout the galaxy, slowly losing reinforcements and support ships. Throughout battles on Kamino and Ryloth, a remaining Venator would seek support on Kashyyyk, which is assumed to be the downed Venator we see on the map. By the end of the Kashyyyk Galactic Assault match, the Venator will be left with only two Republic gunships, which is used for Naboo Galactic Assault. As of right now, there is no link between Geonosis and Felucia that I can find, but if you do have any theories about how the maps might fit together, please comment down below or contact me on Discord in the description. And of course, this is just my personal theory, there could be other links to this. Super Tank There's a concerning new bug discovered on Battlefront 2, allowing players to spawn as a tank with 300,000 health. This astronomical health bar basically means they're invincible for the duration of the game. This glitch is highly rare, but there are a few records of the glitch being replicated. Because this glitch is so game-breaking, I will not be explaining at all how to replicate it. Showing right now is some of the people who did find and replicate this glitch. But again, I just encourage you to not do any glitches in the game, it ruins the fun. Wow, you made it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please take some time to like and subscribe, show your support. Thanks so much to my GRM media team for helping me find the clips. If you did find something else on Battlefront 2, comment down below. Let me know what I missed. If I'm stupid, let me know. If you had something for breakfast, tell me what it was. I don't really care, just tell me everything. Again, if you are interested in joining a Battlefront 2 Milsim, check out our gaming community, it's on Xbox, the GRM. Our disc will be in the description. Of course, follow my TikToks, and I'll see you guys all next time.